Hello there YouTube, Haunter's Brad Goodspeed here. I'm going to keep this very quick because this video is long enough as it is. I cover the mold making process for a small item when you have to make it out of silicone. There have been some tutorials on YouTube about doing small items with plaster molds, but this is a brush on silicone mold for a small item that I needed to do a number of copies of. The video is a bit on the long side and I apologize for that, so I'm just going to cover the mold making and resin casting process here in this video. Maybe in a future one I'll talk about how I paint it up and finished off these items. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm trying to go into a bit of depth here and hopefully answer some questions about how making brush on silicone molds work. So I'm working right now on a little pendant design. I'm having a barbecue for all my haunt uh, actors as a little thank you, a little summer barbecue. And I want to give everyone a little present. So and also work on sort of costume detail. So I've sculpted this little uh, pendant out of Monster Maker's clay. And then this is the formic clay that I've talked about before. I'm just creating a little bed for that. And I'm going to create some registration marks in there and then do a silicone mold. It's sort of a variation on my logo for my haunt that some of you may recognize. So it's going to be a little pendant that will hang on like a leather necklace and I can uh, pass them out to everybody at the party. Okay, so I just put it into this clay bed for a mold and I started carving these registration channels in here but then I realized this is a one-piece mold there will be no underside um, to this so I don't need to register um, the, the silicone to a second uh, side so the only way I think I need to register is the silicone to the uh, plaster mold that mother mold that I'm gonna put on top so for that I'm gonna actually once the silicone is down I'm gonna cut triangle sections out of these corners and um, right here and that's going to uh, let the silicone register into the master mold. The reason I, I kept this channel here is that I already started it and um, I figured you know what since this if you picture this mold is going to be upside down and the negative version of this I'll have this little silicone bump all the way around and that'll just help prevent spillage because uh, the when I cast this it's going to be in resin and it's very fluid uh, so I don't want that running all over the place so there'll be this just positive bump all the way around here to contain any extra um, resin from pouring out over the edges and making a mess. On this sculpt you might see a little bit of shine. That's currently the isopropyl um, uh, dissolving or, or um, evaporating, sorry. Uh, this is a uh, isopropyl mis mirror state, I think it's called. I think it's a, also used as a makeup remover, but in this case um, it's also a solvent of Monster Maker clay. So you just brush that on very lightly and it'll basically smooth out your tool marks. Another thing I've done is draw uh, marks on my uh, work surface of where um, these notches are where I'm going to want to cut into the silicone. Because uh, once I start putting silicone on top I'm not going to be able to see underneath to here. And I don't want the notches I cut in the silicone to cut into these channels because again I might as well have a channel here so I don't get the spillage. So these lines are going to tell me where to notch my silicone so that there's a notch in the silicone so that when I put plaster on top, those notches will be registration marks uh, for the mother mold. Okay, this is my first coat of uh, Smooth On Rebound 25 uh, silicone rubber. And as you can see, I just sort of did the, the barest detail coat on the sculpt itself. And then as it was thickening up, I trailed it on to sort of the the flange or flange or whatever you want to call it uh, to keep to make sure it's a nice strong uh, flange. Um, so you don't want to be trying to dab the rubber as it thickens too much into your details, or it could glom up and it can make a, an air bubble, uh, which is detrimental to your final cast. So okay, this is after my second coating of uh, Rebound 25. Um, I don't know if the shelf life or if this product diminishes with the longer you kind of keep it in storage. I had a half used kit here that was sealed in climate control conditions, but I think it seems to be setting up a little bit faster than I remember last time, but it's still workable. I hope I'm not going to get any air bubbles as a result, but I think we're okay, crossing my fingers. Uh, this is a second coat, as I mentioned. This is not uh, thickened. I wanted to get one more coat uh, with normal viscosity um, but for the next coat um, I want to start really building up on top of um, that sculpt there um, uh, with some thickness to, to deal with for strength so I'm going to use this uh, Thivex uh, thickener which came with my kit 
uh, which basically activate uh, or will basically turn the silicone into more of a trowelable paste that I can uh, really get some body of, of rubber built up on top of, of that uh, sculpt. So I'm thinking one, possibly two more detail, uh, thickened coats, I apologize. We'll get this baby finished off. Okay, this is after the third coat of um, Rebound 25. This time using the Thivex uh, thickener. I uh, used uh, eight drops for two ounces and it thickens it into like a peanut buttery kind of consistency. Um, I could probably get away with what I've done here, but I'm gonna do another one. I can still see a bit of translucency through to the sculpt. I don't know if you can tell there. So I just want it to be a little bit thicker than that. Um, it's not gonna be a whole lot of wear and tear on this uh, mold, uh, considering it's a one piece, but um, I'm gonna just make it nice and strong and then I'll uh, start thinking about the mother mold. That's the fourth and final coat of Rebound 25. Um, I stepped up the quantity here, so this last batch was like four ounces. Uh, so through all the previous batches, it's been maybe three ounces. So just uh, th with some thickener, uh, stepped up the quantity to get this all bulked out, and so uh, I think we've got the beyond the three-eighths of an inch uh, thickness that you that are recommended um, so I think we're all good all right it's the next day and uh, as you can see the silicone is all set up and what I did is I took an exacto knife and I ran around the circumference to give myself a nice clean edge of the silicone and I n created notches um, according to these lines that I talked about earlier so that uh, when I put the plaster paste on top, and uh, in case I didn't mention that before, I've decided to go with plaster paste for my um, support shell rather than plaster, just because I've never used uh, plaster with silicone before, and I just don't. Uh, I just I know plaster paste, and I know what to expect. So um, then, what I did was uh, so, anyways, when I create the shell, it's gonna you know obviously there's gonna be plaster paste in here. It's gonna create a notch that I can lock the silicone mold into. That's the point of registration marks. I then drew an outer line that I'm going to try and work my plaster paste out to so that I have a good solid support shell and I know where to stop. I'm also going to use um, either sonite wax or uh, Vaseline to uh, treat that wood because wood is obviously very fibrous and it's going to hold on to the, or that plaster paste is going to hold on to it. It's going to be a lot of trouble getting that off if I don't release it properly. And then as for the silicone itself, I'm just going to use some uh, Ease Release 200. Um, uh, release spray. So uh, I'm going to start mixing up my plaster paste once this is all kind of ready to go and travel on my uh, support shell. There's the plaster paste mother mold. Um, basically I just take, um, you know, I travel it on there uh, and then I, I, as it's curing I kind of use a popsicle stick to just smooth it out as much as possible. Uh, as it cures it gets easier to do that with without the sticking to the popsicle stick. The whole point being is that this actually cures into an incredibly hard surface and if there are any little peaks coming up of from what was once a fluid, it'll solidify into a really sharp little point that you might, you know, nick your hand on. So uh, that's why I'm going through the trouble of smoothing it all out. I've got about a small dinner plies, a small dinner plate sized mass here kind of now that I'm all said and done. This will be a very strong jacket, stronger than it needs to be for this piece, but just in case I didn't mention it, the point of a mother mold is that the silicone mold underneath is obviously very flexible, which is great for demolding, and, and silicone is great for holding detail. But um, you'd get a warped piece if you tried to just um, cure, you know, your finished uh, piece inside a, a flexible mold. So you need the the hard jacket. I was going now again. This is going to be upside down, so I was toying with the idea of trying to make the the top of this a level flat surface by you know inserting. Um, uh, PVC uh, connectors in there and then having lengths of PVC that I could could create a frame and level off but I'm just not gonna bother just making this quick and easy and to keep it level I'll just um, when I turn it over and I cast pieces I'll have it sort of in a shop towel on top of a shop towel so I can just level it off okay it's a couple hours later and uh, I pulled it up no problems whatsoever came off really easily thanks to the um, all the release I used 
and uh, it came right out. Now you can see the pattern that I was talking about from the registration keys. And now I've got to peel all the clay out of here because the heat, the, this um, plastic paste is, is a, is a two-part resin and it chemically cures, which means there's heat that's coming off of it as it cures with a chemical reaction. So that heat can soften up the clay quite a bit and it's a little bit soft and melty in there. So I've just got to clean it up. I guess I could wait a little bit longer. It would come out a bit harder. But um, And there's all this little sort of flashing around the edges. And I'll probably just leave that as is. I may trim it up. We'll see. Um, maybe I'll do a test pour with it in there and see how it affects the final. That's just from basically silicone that went underneath uh, the sculpt that kind of got in between the sculpt and the bed that I had it on. Uh, just silicone kind of oozed underneath there. Um, but uh, that's pretty much how the mold goes. I'll clean it all up and then it'll be time for a pour. Okay, so I've assembled um, the mold back together. Actually, I just started pulling it out here just uh, before I realized I should record another piece of the video. And I poured in uh, my resin, which is a smooth cast 300 uh, liquid plastic. And I added some pigment. I got the Smooth On So Strong pigments. I got a kit of them. Uh, you just add a tiny little bit to color up this resin. Now if I wanted it to be, look really black, I should have used a transparent resin instead of the white. But I had the white on hand. So anyways, uh, resin cures um, that the thicker parts where there is more resin, like in the center part of the mold here, actually cure faster than the thinner parts. So when these little thinner parts that have, like, for example, trailed over the edge are cured, like this is here, this is solid now, then you know the whole thing's done. So it's counterintuitive. Most things you figure dry, the thinnest parts dry, but this isn't drying, this is curing. And when there's a more uh, body of material, like in the fattest part of it here, there's more of the chemical reaction going on, which triggers it faster. So uh, now I'm going to uh, turn, pull this silicone out and demold this thing. It'll still be green which means the resin is still a little bit soft and it'll have to sort of cure over a few hours but it's uh, fine to pull out now this has been about uh, 15 minutes and there you are there's a faithful reproduction of the original clay sculpt uh, I just had to trim some of the flashing off and I'm going to do a little bit more with an exacto blade I've trimmed most of it off it's just that those little thin pieces that I was talking about curing last that have poured right sort of outside the top of the mold but there you go there's a resin reproduction of my original sculpts. So here we are doing a second pour. Um, the first one I've cleaned up quite a bit, haven't painted anything yet, but um, it, you can see I've uh, the, cleaned up the mold a little bit. I removed a lot of that flashing uh, just with an X-Acto knife. And I'm pretty glad I have that um, channel around there. Again, it wasn't necessary, sort of that bump that goes around the circumference. Again, it wasn't necessary, but it does protect any resin from um, contacting the um, plastic paste shell, which would definitely bond together. Um, I mean, I do apply a little release even to the plastic paste shell, the, the mold release, um, but uh, just so it doesn't, I don't have to grease it right up. Um, it's just nice to have that uh, little dam to protect it. So um, there's a little couple of little bubbles in this pore. I was not very careful, but luckily it's on the back side. Okay, a great little tip that I've learned over the years from watching Bitty Mold Supply videos. I just had some bubbles forming on this next pour at the top, and I just gave it a quick hit of uh, my mold release, of the Ease Release 200, um, and it just breaks the surface tension on the top of the, the pool of resin, and the bubbles just immediately go away. Okay, I have this little um, jewelry file that I got from Michaels, um, and that's helping me sort of uh, file down around the edges so there's no sort of sharp edges um, as you can see when you're casting um, the surface tension toward the edges kind of brings the edge upwards a little bit and you can get this kind of raised edge so I'm just filing some of that down and just cleaning it up a little bit so you can't see anything from the front and um, making all kinds of different colors I'm doing red right now because my kids favorite color is red and he wants one of these pendants for his costume. All right, that's where I'll stop it for today. Hopefully that answered some questions for you about how molds work. I'm going to continue working on these and uh, see which paint strategies work for each. And maybe I'll cover that later. But in the meantime, happy haunting. <laughs>